Hello, my outstanding friends. You know I am now a peer reviewer. And why am I a peer reviewer? Because the peer review process does not work. It's a bunch of friends that all get together and they say, don't talk to this guy, forget about him. So I now peer review them. I went the academic route. I tried to go through academia. I have 3,700 mentions in papers, 143 highly cited pen papers mention me. I, I, they're probably saying the guy's insane. I don't know what they're talking about because I don't care. I am just going to continue to put my research out there. Now let me show you how this started. And they, can, they say, oh, you're not scientific. You don't do this. Yes, I am. I'm totally scientific. You're the ones that are not scientific. When I first started putting this out, I was going to call it fascia-facilitated fossilization. This was back, I think, 2015. Um, and I put this paper out. And it was about what fascia is. And if, if not for fascia, you would be a bag of gushy mixed organic and metal molecules that dissolve in the rain. Fascia is the reason you stay together and is the strings and springs in connective tissue. Fascia is only recognized as important in the last few years. Now this was back 2015. I was one of the first ones to even know anything about it. And then I go through this whole thing. This, this is the, the article on fascia. But what I'm getting at is I tried, I tried going, th and this, this was the one that I got a little better traction on, Introduction to Mud Fossils and Geology. That was a little later. But, you know, I've been in uh, other papers, too. This was one over in uh, uh, Indonesia. They, in a conference over there, Adrian Husbands introduced the mud fossil concept called geological features be mineralized human remains, what DNA testing reveals, and she went through my whole thing about, you know, my discovery and all this, and it met with very little, well, I, I don't think it met with any acceptance at all, to be perfectly honest with you, because it, this is, uh, that was in 2018. Now, I'm just getting, every day now, I'm saying, that I'm getting reports that they're looking into the mud fossil papers that I wrote. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm starting to get some traction on the YouTube um, eh, we'll see. You know, it's true. What is true is true. It's it's a very hard thing to accept for, especially when you become educated to believe that this is just insanity. And everybody believes it's insanity. You're not going to be alone. But if you don't stop and pay attention, then that to me is insanity. Everybody's got their own interpretation of what sanity is. To me, you know, just walking around in circles—that's not sane. And it would not investigating what is right in front of you, DNA tests and CAT scans and specimens. and You could just go walk out in your backyard. If you got any rocks, just pick them up. You're going to find remains of creatures. And most of them I'm finding are human, the ones I'm finding. So I have gone the, the, the academic route. It doesn't work. So here's another one just came in about... My name is mentioned in a paper published in a journal of geophysical research. Whatever they did, I don't know. But I'm getting some, they're starting to not be able to hide from me. And that was what was happening. I was being pushed into a corner and just to keep away from them, don't say a word. That's why I got so loud. And I'm never going to get unloud. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not going to happen. I am a loud person. I don't take well to being thrown in a corner and told to shut up. It never worked for me, and it never will. So just get ready, because it's coming. Like I said, I am confident that I am 100% qualified in every area in science. And I was in the Army. My GT score was 139. This is the original paperwork. And over here, I just pasted in to prove that 139 GT was me. This is 1970, and this is what it says about a one about a the GT. Army general classification. A long history runs with parallel with research and means for attempting to assessment of intelligence or abilities. Composite score from this test is called the general technical, usually abbreviated GT. If you scored 136 or higher before 1980, Mensa will accept the result as proof of being in the 98th percentile. I was 139. 
136 is 98th percentile. 139 is over 100. So don't tell me I'm stupid and I have no right to be able to peer review. I've done my homework. I did my research. I can show my papers and I can stand in front of any single researcher in any field whatsoever. I don't care what it is. If I lose, I lose. That's all. That's all I'm asking for is to be heard. Okay, my friends, as I say, I am totally against the peer review system. However, I am going to peer review the peer reviewers, and I am going to make it fully understandable what they're up to. They, this is all about who we're going to give the money to. This guy's not going to look through all those papers. And say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, this is good. He's going to say, well, you know, Bobby's a pretty good guy. Let's give him the money. A reviewer at the American National Institute of Health evaluating a grant proposal. Everything is about where we're going to get the money. I don't care about money, so I am a little outside of this. But right now, we're changing the peer review process. They, they try to make it, well, it, there never was a process. It was always, you tried to help people to make their research better. That's all I want to do. But here's what we're going to do from now on. Research requires discussion. So a peer reviewer is not even a, a scientist, or a, a, any scientist is not a scientist until they will engage. Peer review must include willingness to engage. So I peer review people, but for them, to re, they have to respond. Otherwise, they're not even a scientist. They, they're just worthless. They just might as well just go around and read comic books all day. The willingness to engage is absolutely required for any kind of research. There's just no other way you can do research. If you just say, here's what it is, and that's it, case closed, I do that, but I, say, I want somebody to come back and say, no, you're wrong. And I say, well, why am I wrong? Let's discuss it. That's what I want. I want peer review. They don't want to be reviewed because they don't want to be discovered for what they're doing, which is nothing more than a money grab at this point. I see no interest in research anymore in any academic realm whatsoever, none. Not in medicine, nowhere. They're talking about doing all these things? No. Right now, if you look up in the National Institute of Health, it tells you to take probiotics for COVID-19. Nobody's ever said that. You haven't heard a word about that from the government, not a single word. And this is from the National Institute of Health. I'll read you the thing in a second. Because not a single word we're hear, hearing is valid anymore. I am going to change that by reviewing these people. I'm going to put them against the wall. Refusal to engage disqualifies any scientist. As far as I'm concerned, they are no longer a scientist. They become irrelevant. Now let me show you about COVID-19 and the simple probiotics that I have been talking about for years, years. I've changed everything with the research I've done because nobody would do that research because they knew they would be destroyed. I don't care, they destroyed me, yes. But I don't care, there wasn't much to destroy. <laughs> I was out, I was, I got plenty of money, I got everything I need, and, and I don't really care about acceptance. I, I care about truth much more than I care about acceptance. And that's how it's going to be right now. And I am going to tell you, and I don't care, you could call me a bragger, or call me anything you want. As far as I'm concerned, all that means absolutely nothing to me anymore. All I care about is presenting the facts that exist and putting people against a wall that have been hiding behind that wall. And that's what I'm doing. Now, you think I'm lying about the things I'm saying? Probiotics in the prevention and treatment of COVID-19. The prevention and treatment of COVID-19, saving lives and flattening the curve are the most important thing. And what did they say at the end here, the conclusion? Way, way, way down here. Evidence supports probiotics role in regulating the immune system, suggesting a definitive, which means absolutely certain role for probiotics in these viral infections. Then it continues on. You come up here and read this. I'm not going to bother. I've read it about a hundred times. Nobody pays any attention to this stuff. It's on the National Institute of Health, COVID-19. Look it up. This is the light research. Peer review has destroyed reality. That is regular light. Light is supposed to only travel at one speed. That is absolutely no question whatsoever accelerating. If And I've been told by physicists, you, can, you can't just look at a picture and know that. How could you possibly not know that? How could they be that incompetent? This is the particle. 
That's the, what they call now a tetraquark. It's a photon. It's got two explosive particles and two just black dark matter. This is dark matter. And this is fission and this is fusion. And it's cold fission and fusion. We didn't have to add 92 lasers and 70 billion joules of electricity to create the fusion I mean the fission we got the fission by dividing it through a filter it filters the white from the black and this is not allowed to be seen I, I am in in that box that academia has put me in this is what they want to see there's no question it's the same thing and that is fission you saw them when they were attached and that is fusion just look it up. Look up cold fusion and see what they say. If anybody could do this, we'd just be thrilled. Oh, we'd be out of our minds happy. No, 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 it wouldn't be. I've been presenting this for over six years. Not a single response from them. Zero. Everybody knows about the mud fossils now. They know about the DNA tests and the CAT scans and all the specimens and the anatomy. And people are starting to understand the process of nucleophilic invasion and substitution, which happened from the Great Flood, which is recorded throughout history. Not one single, not a single university, not one single professor, not one single scientist that claimed to be a scientist will even speak to me about this. I have been destroyed by presenting this and now it's being fully understood but still the academics are hiding. Now they're starting to come out of the woods but they, are, they, they look absolutely disgraceful. It's been 10 years, a complete disgrace and I'm just going to just lay them against the wall. The case is closed for them. I think this is Yale when they all got their sheepskins on graduation day.